My Race to Nowhere. It was my own geometry teacher that told me I was pushing myself too hard. I had come in for tutoring, I was failing the class, and I thought that right then and there I would drop my stuff and just pass out from anxiety. It wasn't because I didn't try, it was because I couldn't grasp the concepts, and my first thought was that I was a failure, and I kept asking myself how my friends pull off even the most advanced math classes. I have grown up with geniuses, I was in their same classes, and I felt that I was always the weak one, and as I struggled to be mediocre, I would try my hardest to enjoy myself. But at every moment that I did, it almost felt like I could have been at home studying, or that I was wasting my time. I found myself spiraling from one place to another. I wanted to learn about anything and everything, and still, my thirst for knowledge is insatiable, limitless. My search to be the best at everything turned me into a machine. I could not enjoy life. I just functioned, continuously flowing behind every other student in the river of the 21st century. The thing about it is, it never slows down enough for us to get to the bank. My teacher saw the pain in my eyes, the pain that I had tried to keep hidden starting from my middle school career. She told me of a screening that the Coppell High School faculty had attended. It was a screening over Race to Nowhere, a documentary designed for teachers and students to see the damage they may be causing for themselves within the school curriculum. I went home and plugged the name into YouTube to see the preview. Within the first few minutes of watching it, I began to cry. I couldn't extricate myself from a population who takes out the life and creativity of our children to make doctors and lawyers out of them from a script. The entire piece consists of my passion at the time I was writing it. My first thought was of my own creation. The next thought came by questioning myself and why should I put my time into sharing my thoughts. This isn't necessary. I don't have to inform people using the extra time I had. I could have just sat there just to be a human experiencing developed thoughts. But then I realized this was right for me. This is who I am. This has not come from pressure. My character is what made me want to share what I had to say. And it wasn't through a forced prompt. We are all individuals seeking our own ways, our own downfalls and triumphs through our own methods. Sometimes I feel like my own doesn't own up to others' expectations, and when those methods do me wrong, I doubt who I am as a person. But the secret is, it was meant to be. Who I am makes my actions inevitable, because in the end, all I've ever done is listen to my heart. This could be my tragic flaw, but I must remember that I am only at the dawn of my life and another. Actually listening to our hearts is what we should all be doing. I had stopped listening to myself. My mind said one thing, biased by the opinions of the A students, and my heart was left in the dust for a while. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do IB or AP or DAP. I told myself for the longest time to do IB, to up the GPA. But why was I really doing it? It was by comparing myself to my friend's standards. People are starting to forget that we weren't all designed within each other's image. We all can't live up to a society that's perpetually growing faster and faster with career options and technology. Sometimes just saying no is the most beautiful thing you could ever say or do for yourself. So let me reintroduce myself. My name is Erica Rohde. I stress out way too easily, I am not a straight A student, and I am still on the journey to find out who I want to be. But I will not push myself so hard that I forget where my passions lie. I am a human being, and if I make mistakes and I do not always live up to other standards, so be it.